Recorded live from the Richcom Studios in Central Oregon, this is the Stacks of Packs Afterthoughts Podcast. With your hosts, Lino and James, and all the way from Portland, Oregon, Devin. Where do you think Stacks of Packs is going to be? Where are we headed? And especially because we're going to be finishing up with the search for the force of will. Maybe is it an episode or two? Like two we have two or three more episodes after that. Where we're gonna go in the future? Mm-hmm. If we have enough subscribers. Hopefully, they'll gear us towards where we're gonna go. If not, then we'll basically put our heads together and talk about what's gonna be the next um, thing we start opening up. Because I think for right now, what I'd like to do is keep it with you know the cliche thing of opening up packs. I have some ideas that I ran by you that I, you know don't want to see on camera yet because Mm -hmm. nobody else is doing that idea yet and i'd like Mm -hmm. to go ahead and start getting to on board with that i don't want to cross any political realm because it's just too sticky it's sticky well i don't know if you've seen what's going on apparently much in the magic community alone yeah i don't even want to get involved with that so for the most part i just want to be a humble channel we talk about old cards we look at the old artwork we talk about how certain tournaments were we talk about old players we talk about you know, anything that has to do with magic basically from its birth until probably around 2001 to 2003 ish, right, right around there. So we're just going to keep a nostalgic, nostalgic feel, feel. to mm-hmm. our channel. Uh, yeah, because you were mentioning that you wanted to talk a little bit more about Mike Long and stuff like that. You've been doing a lot more research. Yep. And uh, which is kind of interesting to me because being someone on the outside looking in, just hearing the stories are kind of cool because now we have, and now there's, you know, a lot more things of interest that are more about the surroundings of the game rather than the game itself. It's still core to the game. Exactly. So what so far, I know you haven't completed your research, so I haven't done the um, episode on it yet, but what what do you, what is your take on the whole Mike Long situation? And a lot of people probably don't even know what you're Yeah, so Mike about. Long was probably one of the most um, famous Magic players in the 90s. He was there. He was basically the face of the game at the time. And he had a very unconventional style. Remember how we were just reading how the Hammer, or Sean, I think Rainier, had a style where it was very conversational and he unnerved his opponents that way? That's how Magic was in its early years. I mean, it was trying to find its way. Mike Long was no different. He would get up on his chair. He would sit very weird. I mean, he would converse with you. And a lot of people would see him as a very overbearing person. Mm -hmm. But you're also talking about somebody who, I mean played football he played or he wrestled as well i mean i think he even played collegially he played football as well Mm -hmm. so you're talking about somebody who people i guess in the magic world would consider a jock you know right it'd be like a nerd trying to play football yeah they'd go after him and pick on him exactly you know so his style i mean didn't mesh very well i think with other Mm -hmm. players of the game of that time and still wouldn't you know mesh well with players you know today i think um what I want to focus on is why a player like Mike Long is not in the Hall of Fame. People say he cheated, okay? And right now I'm trying to read and try trying to solidify that, I guess, that he cheated. I, I'm trying to find the actual proof that he cheated and not circumstantial evidence that s- suggests he may have. Right. And, and also we, we've talked about that before is like, how much of it was actual cheating where he's breaking the rules, rules and yeah. how much of that was just people not liking his style. style. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, it, I've seen that a lot just in general with people and, and, and don't with, like your style well, and you're breaking the rules. And with any tournament or any professional play, you can break the rules to an extent mm. for so long, right? Right. But if you make it to a championship or if you make it to a finals, you have all eyes on you. So you still have to have skill to win the game. And what I want to focus on when it comes to Mike Long is his deck building cre- um, creativity. He created what, in essence, was the first what we call combo deck in Magic. And he beat, I believe, Mark Justice using that that combo deck. Who's Mark Justice? Another Magic player who was pretty popular during the 90s, who's also not in the Hall of Fame, who also won a lot of championships, but also is called the cheater as well. Ooh. So what, what hurts for me... When I, when, I, when I look at like the early years of Magic, you have a lot of players from the early years of Magic who aren't in the Hall of Fame 
because they were quote unquote cheaters. Okay. You mm-hmm. still have cheaters today. You're always going to have cheaters in the game. In any game, if you look at football, Tom Brady used deflated footballs. You think that's going to hold him from going to the Hall of Fame? Not at all. Exactly. Okay. So we can say, oh, maybe all his career he was using deflated footballs. But regardless of the fact that he used deflated footballs or not, you know he's going to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And just for me, just like Mike Long, you can say that he did this, he did that. It still takes some kind of game skill and gameplay and to have the know how to create decks that win games. Pre net decking internet. Pre, and that's the key thing. And that's the key word I think a lot of people need to understand too. The key term is pre net decking. You're talking about somebody who, you know, what the pros do, the pros do today, they don't net deck. They, they get together in a room just like how you and I are. It might be eight of them. And they just start scheming of decks, decks constantly just, you know, for 12 to 16 hours. My friend Rick, his nephew, Patrick Chapin, you know, is a Hall of Famer in, ma- in Magic. And that's what they do. They go two weeks prior to like a pro tour and all they're doing, yeah, they're probably sightseeing, they're probably drinking, but they play magic. That's what they do, and that's why they're so good at the game. Mm-hmm. So you can't take that away, you know, from Mike Long. You know that's what he did to get to where he was at. Correct. So, you know, you want to talk about, oh, he had a card in his lap. You talk about a guy who could hardly sit still in his chair. How would it be in his lap? Mm-hmm. Okay? You want and to that's talk- one of the only things so far that you even found that comes close well, to the other thing too is, The other thing, too, is, is the randomizing of his deck was the other thing. But you're talking about during a time frame when... It, from what I found is that judges weren't looked at very in high regard. They were being questioned. There was a lot of issues with the judge community at that time. People just did not have a liking for the judge community at that time. And then you take a figure that a lot of people didn't like at the time as well, Mike Long. And it, to me, it was a perfect storm that, okay, they're going to do a deck check, look at his deck, and say that it's too randomized. That he that he manipulated his deck when he, when he shuffled it to be really good and randomized. Mm-hmm. Anybody can shuffle a deck to make it look randomized. I, I I get the fact that like maybe he piled his lands in one section and all his other spells in another and maybe shuffled it up, you know. But ultimately in the end, you're still playing a game of probability. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it has to have some kind of luck in it too. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you get people who have like, you know, who have draws that are five, six, seven lands in a row. Or sometimes you get people who get just great draws. It happens in the game. And honestly, too, uh, there was a mathematician talking about this in um, about randomization. Uh, apps like Pandora had to put in an actual algorithm that would make sure that it wasn't random. Because if it is truly random, if so for songs, you're going to get songs that will play back to back. Because random is random. It is. Just, yep. It doesn't matter if one comes up next. So like if you're having land after land after land, it could still be random because... That's usually what you expect, and if it wasn't completely random draw, then you get you won't get those back to back. Because if it is completely random, you don't know what's coming up next, and it could be just by chance that it's going to come up a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. And what does that even? How I mean, I know that has some impact. Yeah. Like if you can get as much mana out or correct, like you're going to be able to have a little bit of an edge. Yeah, and that's what everyone wants is that edge. You know, to to kind of put them in a better probability state i guess mm-hmm. you know but ultimately it's luck of the draw on any cards yeah you can manipulate your deck a certain way that's why people cut decks you know before they play and today they shuffle them sometimes you know they're not going to do a simple oh, i'm just going to cut it they're going to grab your deck they're going to shuffle it and make sure that it's definitely shuffled you know mm-hmm. for me it's like when i look at players who are not in the hall of fame and look at like mike long what he brought to the game and what he helped he helped grow that game whether you like him or not he helped to grow the game of magic Mm-hmm. Okay, people get on Mark Rosewater, the current, I guess, what um, R and D, and basically head head of Wizards of the Coast, who keeps voting for Mike Long to be in the Hall of Fame. You can get on the fact that he cheated, but what else did he do for the game? If you negate Mike Long, you negate Mark Justice from it. Basically, you're saying the magic started in like 1998. Right. That that magic <laughs> didn't exist prior to that. You know, yeah, that there was no good players prior to that. You're saying there's not much of an impact. Yeah. Uh, they, that's. A, I mean, it's a little bit different. Uh, baseball was going on a long time, but that's kind of the thing with Pete Rose. Yeah. Because, like, he can't get in the hall of him. He's kind of banned from a lot of stuff. But by all accounts, if you look at how he played and how he managed, is is kind of deserving of the Hall of Fame. And yep. when he got caught gambling, which the difference between him and Mike Long is he actually got caught, caught. for an infraction. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Long, or Pete Rose, 
didn't bet against his team and then point shade. Yeah. He bet but for his team. team. Yeah. <laughs> so he could have lost. He was still not gambling in a way that would be to where he could cheat it. His yep. team just had to play well. Um, but yeah, in coming back to your other Tom Brady analogy, and then you can even do that with Bill Belichick with Spygate and all that oh, stuff yeah. that they did. Um, neither one of them are not going to be first ballot Hall of Famers. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and that, and that's the thing that, that kind of irks me because these players contributed to the game, and I think that's why for me I hold on to like a lot of like ninety three to basically ninety eight. You can even say up to two thousand, two thousand one is is my prime time when I really collected Magic. When you know I didn't really play in tournaments until basically I got out of the army mm-hmm. up until two thousand probably eleven is when I started getting back into it and actually playing competitively. Mm-hmm. But you know. If you basically discriminate and push aside, oh, that never happened. That's a that's a black mark in Magic's history. Every mark is gonna have every every I guess sport has an era that's bad. Baseball had steroids. Okay, mm-hmm. you have football that has a concussion protocol. All right, basketball had what their 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 lockout that finally you know ended, and now players are getting paid bank because mm-hmm. of it. But those players who decided to 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 stop playing basketball, they still made the Hall of Fame. You know, there's certain players who did Star Wars that are still going to make, you know, the Hall of Fame. Or they're going to be... Some of them or, are, right now is a big debate on mm-hmm. that. Or yeah. be in the record book still, even though they're going to have an asterisk, yeah. you know? Right. So they're still recognized for their contributions to the sport. Mm. And that's where I think what we've done to our early Magic players is turn our back on them and say, oh, no, that's that's the dark ages of Magic. And even one player that, you know, I don't particularly care for all that much, and a lot of people do like him, his name is Randy Bueller, you know... I'm a big fan of Patrick Chapin. I'm a big fan um, of of a lot of other Magic players, and like um, John Finkel, for example, is another one I looked up to in the in the '90s. And you know, he's a Hall of Famer. Mike Long, you know, I think is deserving of that right as well. But Randy Bueller, he made a comment one time when when Patrick Chapin was playing in a a pro tour, and you could tell that Patrick was getting a little. Um, not not angry is not the word I'm trying to use, but you could tell that he was under pressure, under stress, because he was down, I think, 3-1 in the tournament, okay? And so he, he came wearing a tie. He His dream has always been, I, th- I believe, to, to win a pro tour. I think he's always only ever gotten second. I have to talk to Rick about it. Because I don't know Patrick, you know, personally. I hung out with him once, that's it. But Rick is my main, my main guy, you know? Love talking to him. I love talking about magic with him. But if you watch, watch it's on YouTube, he gets a little disheveled, and... I guess he makes a move, and I'm actually comparing two two wrong tournaments. It's a different tournament, but the tournament in which I'm trying to bring up is he's trying to make a play. Okay, a card that allows him to look through his deck, I believe, and, and pick out certain certain cards and put them off to the side or, or something like that. But basically, what happens is you put your hand off to the side, you do what you need to do with your deck, pick out the cards you want to pick out. Okay, I believe you have to. I think the card that he had to use, he had to show to his to his opponent, but somehow he forgot to do one of the steps and right then and there randy bueller makes a comment saying that oh this you know so basically in essence you should expect that from patrick because he came from the dark ages of magic and i'm like and i'm like that to me is so wrong to do first off to even say okay and there's a hall of famer who makes a mistake people could even say oh that's cheating And and that's my thing it's like a lot of what we say about Mike Long cheating is that opinion, right? Because you know, you just didn't like him. Yeah, because you didn't like Jealousy. him, or is it because you know he actually cheated, or did he make a mistake? Yeah, and and I think the whole term cheating or that player cheated can be up to interpretation. <clears throat> I mean, there's players who can see legitimately draw multiple cards for no reason. Okay, that's cheating. Okay, that hands down. All right, but. If we talk about randomization of the deck, right? And then you talk about how the judges were at that time not really highly revered, okay, or look looked up at. And they had this opportunity to like take a name and an image of somebody who most of the community didn't like already and blast him for it and to make your community look better. Correct. To me, you know, this look, that's what it looked like happened with Mike Long. Randomization of a deck, basically saying that he altered the randomization of his deck during a deck check. Suspended, I think, six months is what happened, okay? And all the community was like, yeah, they finally suspended that cheater and made the judging community look good. So was it because Mike Long really cheated or was it because the judges were trying to make their image better? Because they had so much pressure. Exactly. Kind of like your Tom Brady theory. Yeah, you know? So 
for me, that's what I want to try to unravel. I want to go deeper into right. with Mike Long. I think that you have a player who contributed a lot to the game, and I think he deserves a seat in the Hall of Fame. Gotcha. So you start petition. We could go riot. We should, you know. Apparently, that seems a way to get things done these days. <laughs> go right. Yeah, from what I've been seeing on on the YouTube community, it's like, oh, you know, social blast or whatever it is. You know, go to someone's YouTube and file reports, reports, reports. Like this mass, like what's it called, firestorm of reports to yeah. get the channel blocked. Get I'm the like, channel blocked. I'm like, really? I'm like, anybody are you who's against anybody who's against Mike Long being in the Hall of Fame, their channel should be. Blocked, blocked and taken down, apparently, apparently, exactly. That's there. what's gonna happen to us. Yeah, <laughs> and that, and that's the sad part, you know, because I think every person's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, people want to call him a cheater. Yeah, okay, you can call him a cheater, but I say that he still contributed enough to Magic that he warrants Hall of Fame. Right, and and I guess going to your point too about back then and how it was really just kind of getting going. Anyway, they didn't, they may have had rules, but no one really understood how the rules would affect anything, and this was all. A lot of trial and error coming through. The early through. years of the game, yes. And so building something like that, I think, with anything that you're doing, <clears throat> it's hard to take. I guess I'm, I'm not getting political, not trying to anyway, but the Founding Fathers is like, yeah, there were some things that probably weren't the best in the world, but like we still you know, think about the Founding Fathers in a little bit of a high regard because they started something that was special. Yep. And they set the thing in motion. And like Mike Long... Is part of that setting magic in motion. Like, would yes. magic even be where it is at all today? Exactly. And it I, wasn't for that long. And I don't think anybody had the foresight of what the game would become, but... And could he have been, honestly, could it have had an impact because of how excited, exciting of a player he was? And that's what I'm saying. Because he was so boisterous, because he mm -hmm. was so interesting. Um, instead of just seeing people flip cards, you got someone who's talking and doing things. Yep. And, and, and how many... I mean, and, and, we and we have that even in any sport today. You can look at, like, for example, Odo Beckham Jr., for football, or even Le'Veon Bell. You can look at LeBron James, okay, from LeBron basketball. James. Well, I mean, that's, look at what he does. Mm -hmm. He's a social media, like, juggernaut, juggernaut dude. Yeah. You know, everyone got up in arms mm -hmm. about Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's the day, that's what we live in. That's what sports does. You know, you have these characters, these people that come around for a short period of time, that can be very energetic and that can help lift the game. You can't tell me LeBron James, just because of his basketball skills alone, has helped bring basketball to a certain status that right, he's done today. a lot more, more than, than just that. playing the game. Yeah, he's affected it in a major way. He's, you know, practically created the way that owners and GMs actually approach fielding teams. Yep. And um, you could say that same thing, you know, about players like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson. Like they propelled the game. Yep. In such a way. Well, and, and here we go. And this is the final thing I'm actually going to say about the whole Mike Long thing. We talk about how he basically invented combination decks or mm -hmm. a combo deck, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many players today try to find combos now? Right. In cards that come out, they try to find that to be the first one to come up with that combo. Okay. That all started with one player. Right. He started an archetype of a, mm -hmm. of a deck that people strive to try to find now. Correct. In any set that comes out for Magic. So that alone, you can't tell me he hasn't influenced Magic. Big time. And that's the truth. And here we are, 25 years later, still, people are trying to come up with a combo deck. Mm -hmm. So That's how it goes. Cool. Well, I hope Stacks Packs keeps going the way we're thinking. Um, I'd say to this uh, little conversation we had, uh, we'll probably fit in with uh, something we're trying to get going, which is called Met, a Stacks of Packs Afterthoughts, where we're going to take a lot of our conversations post-episode and bring them to you in an audio podcast form. And, I like it. Yeah, and so we're going to be getting in a lot more conversations like this as well. So if you are part of the Magic community and you're a uh, fan of what Magic is or anything, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily... I never played Magic and just coming into it, and you kind of start getting really interested and... Uh, there is some drama that surrounds it, so I think there's a lot of cool things that we'll be able to discuss uh, in Sex Packs Afterthoughts, and we'll just keep going and continue to grow on the channel. And if you are listening to this podcast uh, on YouTube with uh, Sex Packs Afterthoughts, one, go check out the rest of our channel. Go check out the rest of the Sex Packs episodes and uh, our product reviews as well. Uh, we just got done doing one. Uh, and please, if you got anything out of it, like, share, and subscribe, and we appreciate you all. And yeah. I want to know people's feedback. Yeah. Give us your feedback. Comment, like, comment, share. The whole shebang. Clicking the bell thing. Click the bell. Giving us likes. 
helping us get subscribers. Four thumbs down. It's cool too. <laughs> tell, tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your brothers, tell your baby daddies <laughs> that we're coming around. All right, guys. You guys have a great night. Please like, share, and subscribe, and then click the bell for more future content.